everyone, and welcome to today's GoTo Training New Organizer Training. My name's Nikki. I'll be your trainer today. And today's focus, we're going to be teaching the basic features of GoTo Training to help you with that first training and to become a more successful organizer. To address the more advanced feature GoTo Training offers, we will be providing you with an on-demand training module. I'll explain the module more toward the end of this training. So let's get started. Before we get into our training content, we do have a couple of quick housekeeping items to review. You do have two options for joining the audio, computer audio or telephone. To switch between the two, you're going to simply click on the circle next to your preferred audio choice. If joining via the computer audio, it is recommended that you do wear a headset to help avoid echo. If joining via the telephone, just make sure you enter in your unique PIN number. Now, your GoToTraining control panel, it is going to minimize by default to the tab on the left side here, which we call the Grab tab. If you prefer to have the control panel expanded for the entire session, simply come up here, right-click the orange arrow icon, and uncheck the Auto Hide option. Throughout the training, I may be asking you to raise your hand in response to a question. You're going to be able to click on your own little hand icon on your Grab tab to do so. We've provided you with a list of materials, so please go ahead and take a look at these. We've included some important resources here. We're going to be referencing these as we go through the training. These same materials, they will be sent to each of you in the follow-up email after the session. Go ahead and type in your questions as I'm presenting via the chat box. Just make sure you send those questions to organizers only. So here is a quick little agenda. We do have a lot to review in today's session, but I do want to let you know you always have access to on-demand training videos and support resources on the GoToTraining support site. And I'll be showing you the support site in just a few moments. And the support site link is also available in the materials section of your control panel. So you're more than welcome to click that now. You can bookmark that page for easy reference. We do offer this training every week, so you're more than welcome to come back and join us again in the future as well. So here is the agenda. We're going to first discuss planning for and the scheduling of your training. We're going to review some items to think about prior to hosting. We're going to discuss your prep for starting your session, and we're going to review how to start your training and manage the live event. We're going to follow up with some resources for additional training and support and open it up for remaining questions. So how does it work? GoToTraining works through screen sharing. That means you can simply open your presentation materials on your computer screen and you can share those directly with your attendees. There's no need to upload anything or predetermine your meeting documents. It allows you the flexibility in what you share and the freedom to make any last minute changes. So let's review the GoTo Training roles. The organizer is the GoTo Training account holder who schedules, starts, and manages the training. Most likely all of you are in the organizer role, which is why you're with us in the training today. The attendees are invited to the training by the organizer via a registration link. They do not need to have a GoTo Training account to participate. Now, as we move into the scheduling and customization section, we're curious and we just want to know, how are you planning to use GoToTraining? Go ahead and enter that into the chat box. Training for users of our software. We're going to use it for internal training for new hires. Training for sales teams on processes and updates. Legal and safety training internal and external training so we don't have to travel. Awesome. So as you can see, there are plenty of great use cases for GoToTraining. And generally, you're going to want to put a little forethought into your training. So here are some items to consider when planning for your training. Consider how you're going to invite your attendees. This could be through, through social media or via direct communication. Be sure to gather your training materials and think about when you want to make those available to your attendees. Consider having a co-organizer for background support. 
They can be added in advance if you have a second GoToTraining login or on the fly when in session. Lastly, please make sure you practice. Practicing is important and it's going to help you become more comfortable with the control panel. GoToTraining is unlimited use, so it's as easy as setting up a new session and title it Practice. The easiest way to schedule your training is by logging into your account through the main GoToTraining website or from the desktop shortcut. I do want to point out the shortcut is going to be the GoToMeeting shortcut. When you select Schedule a Training, it's going to automatically launch you right into the GoToTraining scheduling page. All right, so now I'm going to actually pop over into the live demo and we're going to discuss how to schedule a training. First thing though, as mentioned, I was or I am going to point out the support site. So right here when you're in your account, you can click 24-7 support. This is what that site looks like, super valuable. Here you can type in a question or a keyword. It's really good about pulling any related articles around that. Notice we've got some how can we help you articles. Maybe you want to learn about recording or about scheduling training. Scrolling down even further, these are going to take you to the top videos and you can even browse the video library. And down here towards the bottom, another really valuable resource, download guides and resources. Maybe you want to print out a guide and have it handy at your desk. Notice contact support. If you click Get Connected here, it's going to list our global phone numbers and you can literally talk to someone 24-7. We do offer this training multiple times per week. You're more than welcome to click here to re-register or you can tell your colleagues about it. Last thing I want to point out is our community right here where it says Ask a Question. That looks like this, another area to get support. What's nice is you can actually browse and see what other customers are saying, what questions they're asking, maybe get some ideas on how to use GoToTraining, but it's also being monitored internally. So here you can pop in any feedback or product suggestion because we do love hearing from you. All right, back to the website. We're going to first start with the left-hand side, starting with the library. Now the library is an internal account storage where you and your co-organizers can access materials, tests, polls, and evaluation. Now anything that you think you're going to repurpose in new training, put it in the library because then instead of having to re-add it, you can just pull directly from what's already in here. So when you're adding materials, tests, polls, and evaluations, you can just pull straight from the library and add them in. Catalogs here, this is one of our more advanced features and it will be covered in the advanced training module. My recording. By default, when you record your training, it's going to automatically save in the My Recording section right into your account. Now the benefit of having it saved here is you can still download a hard copy of the recording, save it to your computer. You can watch the recording. Probably the best feature is you can take this link right here, copy it, paste it into an email, embed it on your website. Anybody that clicks that link, they are going to have to give name and email. Once they do that, it's going to start playing the recorded training and you can even see who viewed it. You could also delete the recordings. Generate reports. These are all the different types of reports that you can run and go to training. And it's nice because each report does have a description as to what it's going to pull. The attendee report, that's going to really dive into the attendee. How long they were in there for, what questions did they ask, what were their poll response, a lot of valuable information. Settings. Now, first off is the audio tab. Now, GoToTraining does include built-in audio. We give you the option to join via the voice over IP or a long distance phone number. Whatever you have selected here, every time you schedule a new training, it's going to automatically pull from these defaults. Notice next to the telephone option, I can click edit. It's going to show you all the long distance countries that we offer. Any country that you want to make a default, just go ahead and select it here. Then every time you schedule a new training, it's going to populate a long distance number for that specific country. Now some of you might have access to the toll free option. This is called Open Voice Integrated. Now this is an additional paid service, but what this allows, it does allow you to offer toll free numbers in your training. 
does work the same way. Any country you put a check mark next to, every time you schedule a new training, it will automatically offer a toll-free number for that specific country. It is a paid additional service. Now you do have the option to use your own conference call service by selecting the little bubble here. You are going to then be responsible for plugging in those third-party phone numbers. Keep in mind, if you're using your own conference call service, it will take away some of the integrated features. So for example, if you record, it's not going to capture everyone's audio. It's going to take away the voice over IP option. You're not going to be able to mute and unmute from the control panel, and it's not going to identify who's speaking. So I do recommend using the built-in audio as much as possible to take advantage of those built-in features. Instant join. What this allows when it's enabled, it allows any of your attendees who join from their Chrome browser, it's going to launch them in through the browser and they're not going to have to download. If you keep this enabled, I do recommend watching this short little video right here. But again, if they're on Chrome, it's going to launch them through their browser. They won't have to download any software. Recording. As mentioned, by default, when you record, the recordings are going to automatically save online right into your account here. Then you can determine whether or not you want to include the webcam. The other option is you can have that recording save hard copy to your computer. Very last thing that we see here is labs. I'm not going to click into the lab features, but what these are, these are beta features that you can get access to. They are in beta, so if you do want to find out more about those, click into the lab feature. All right, so now I'm going to click Create Training, and let's schedule our training. We're going to title this First, oops, first Training. Here you can type in an agenda or a description. You could leave it blank if you wanted, but you probably want to tell people why they're joining your training. You can do a one-time training today, however, you can also do a reoccurring training if it's going to happen more than once. Click on the calendar, select the date, the start time, the end time. Now you do want to schedule it in your own time zone, even if you have people joining all over the world. When they actually register, they'll have the option to add it to their calendar and it should convert the time for them. Once you hit schedule, it's going to take you to the Manage Training section right here. Now, we've already um, done the title, the description, but you can always edit this. Now, if you have more than one Go to Training license attached to your account here, you can add a co-organizer to help host it. Now, if you don't have a second Go to Training license, you can still add a co-organizer, but not until you start the session. Now remember, the audio is going to pull over from the default audio settings. However, you're still going to have the option to customize it on the fly. Maybe for this specific training, I know someone from Australia is going to be joining. So you can always add or take away from the default. Just make sure you save your changes. It'll take you right back to that Manage section. All right, scrolling down to the class activities. The first thing that we see are breakouts. Now, as mentioned before, a breakouts are more of advanced feature for the Pro and Plus Go to Training plans, and it will be talked about extensively in the Go to Training Advanced module. So, materials. So, this is a great section to add materials that you can push out to your audience. And remember, you can add a brand new material from the computer or the library. You can pull directly from the library. So again, anything that you're going to reuse, put it in the library so you can easily grab it. Now, once you add the material, you do want to click on the little settings icon here because it's going to give you some additional options. When do you want that material to be available? Once they register, during the training session, and even after the session. We're going to click Manage Training, and the next thing that we have here are the tests. Same concept, you can create a new test, and if you do that, here are your options for the test, true or false, short answer, and multiple choice. Or, clicking back on test, remember you can pull from the library. Any test that you're going to repurpose, just pull from the library. Then, just like the materials, when you see a little settings icon, you want to click that, there's going to be some additional options. 
When do you want to give the test? Once they register, during the session, after, and then you can decide whether or not you want to show the test score. Next thing are polls. Just like everything else, you can pull a poll from the library or you can create a new one. Now polls are multiple choice and it's a great way to keep your audience engaged. Let's go ahead and create a brand new one together. So you're going to create the poll in advance and then the organizer is going to be able to launch it at any point in session. Let's go ahead and click manage training. The last thing here we see is evaluation. For the evaluations, if you were to create a new one, it looks kind of like this. On a scale of one to five, what did you think of the training? You can do short answer, multiple choice. You can just leave an open comment box. You can do a variation of all these questions to show up on the same survey. Back to manage training. Now, to invite your attendees, we will circle back, but they are going to have to register via this link, but I'll tell you how to push that out when we're done scheduling, because we're not quite done yet. Next is registration and payment. Now, bare minimum, your attendees have to give you name and email in order to register. Now, if you have the GoToTraining Pro or Plus plan, here you can add additional questions to show up on the registration. Maybe you want to know their phone number and their job title. Now, if you mark it required, they have to fill it out and they can't leave it blank. If it's not required, they could potentially leave that blank. You could even create your own custom question. This will show up on the registration. I do want to point out, custom registration is only for the Pro and Plus plans. If you have the starter plan, it's just name and email. Payments is also a great feature with GoToTraining. You can collect payment integrated with PayPal um, when people register for your training. Now, it does have to be set up from your company admin, but once they set it up, basically you're going to come here, select the dollar amount, and then it's going to show up on the registration page, and that's when it's going to collect that payment. Definitely learn more about payments here if you're going to use it, and then your admin is going to have to set it up on the admin center for you. Manage training. We're going to keep on scrolling down. Now, what's nice is in real time, as people register, it's going to actually count down, and you can even view real time registration. Now, once an attendee registers, our system will automatically send reminder and follow up emails. Now, the first thing to note is that in those emails, it says if you have any questions, and it's going to be linked to the license holder's name and email. However, you can change that. Maybe you want this to go to an alias or the training department. You can change the reply to name and email. In the reminder email, you can kind of set the frequency depending on how far out your training is scheduled, hour, day, week before. does have pre-populated information on how to join the training, and if you included materials and text, it'll also have all of that. Now, the follow-up email is going to go out by default one day after the scheduled end date. And then if you want to include a certificate, just select this option here. Basically, the certificate is just going to be generic saying you've completed the training. And then if you recorded it and you want to include the recording, make sure you have this selected. And this is kind of a preview of what that follow-up email is going to look like. You can always come here and type in your own words. All right, now to invite your attendees, you're going to want to click the share button right here. Then you can email the registration URL to yourself and then forward BCC it out. Or maybe you want to pop that URL into your own custom email or embed it on your website. You can just copy the training information. Maybe you just want to quickly paste it into an instant message or push it out however you want by copying it. And then notice you can also push the registration out to social media. When you're ready to start the training, you're going to click the Start button here, or if you're on the My Training page, you can also click the Start button from the front of the page. All right, now before we move on to the next section of our training, let's take a quick poll to see which features in GoToTraining you're most excited about. So you're going to be able to vote directly on your screen here. And we want to know what features are you most excited about in GoToTraining. 
I'm going to keep it open just a few more seconds. And I'm going to close it out. Thank you. Now, audio is a very important piece in GoToTraining. And we're going to discuss some audio best practices. And for telephone, you're going to simply make sure that you have phone call options selected in the audio pane of the control panel. And this is where you're going to find the dial-in number, the access code, and the audio pin. Now, what's key to remember here is everybody has a different pin. And it's what identifies their unique audio to the system. So you should not share your PIN with anybody else as the PIN number is what identifies your audio specifically and it enables your muting control. If someone does not enter in their PIN, they're not going to be able to be muted or unmuted. So please encourage all of your attendees who join via the telephone to enter in their PIN so you can better manage the call of the organizer. Now for those of you who prefer the voice over IP, the mic and speakers, there are definitely some factors you're going to want to consider to allow for optimal audio quality. The first is making sure you have a headset. Now it's really important that when you use the voice over IP you use a headset because it's going to help eliminate background noise and feedback. Now because the voice is run through the internet, your internet connection and speed can also affect the voice quality. You're going to want to make sure you have a high-speed wired internet connection and also close any unused programs to optimize bandwidth. Now, if you've decided that you're well-equipped to use the VoIP, I highly recommend getting in the habit of doing a sound check. It takes less than 30 seconds. All you do is click on the sound check link in the audio section of the control panel. This little window is going to open up where you can then test both your speakers and your microphone especially if you have multiple microphones or speakers connected, you're going to want to select the correct one for GoToTraining to use. And you can select your preferred hardware and test the microphone by speaking. The little meter is going to light up, indicating the system is picking up your voice. Let's review some best practices. It's a good idea to either mute everybody or ask the attendees to mute themselves when they're not speaking. This lends itself to a clean audio experience. If you're going to ask attendees to mute themselves, explain they can do this by clicking on the green microphone symbol on the Grab tab on the GoToTraining control panel. I'll talk more about this process in just a few moments. Everybody who uses the phone to connect in, they must enter in their PIN, or they should. And it's very important that everybody makes the correct selection according to the audio preference in their own control panel. What I mean by this. If you've dialed in by the phone, but then your control panel is set to mic and speakers, the system will actually connect you into the audio twice, and it creates a lot of feedback. So always double check your control panel and ask attendees to do the same. The preference section is another area to review prior to starting your trainings. Preferences can be accessed from the control panel if you're in a practice session by going to the file menu. If you're not in a session, you can access them from the shortcut. This is an example of the Mac in the top right. Now, I encourage you to go through all of these settings within your own account. Today, we're just going to be covering a few key sections. In the general section here, you can set your session identity. This is how your name and your email appears in the control panel. In the training section, you can set your personal preferences for how you would like the go to training control panel to interact with you. Recordings can save locally to your computer, and in the recording section, you can adjust the save to location for the recorded file. You should likely leave the other default options selected, which are to use our system's integrated audio, and provide a reminder to convert the recording when your training ends. In general, it's a good idea to start your training session around 30 minutes early. Starting early allows you plenty of time to review your settings and connect into audio to do your sound check. You should also close all your unused programs and open up your presentation materials. We also recommend preparing a time for housekeeping at the beginning of the training to let attendees know how they can interact with you. We did that during today's session when we reviewed the different ways you can connect into audio and the attendee control panel. 
end. Starting early will not affect the scheduled training time. You can always start early and you can always stay late. The training will never automatically start or end based on the scheduled time. Now we discussed the two main roles at the beginning of our training today, but let's quickly review how these roles affect the live session. The organizer must start the training and by default they are the presenter. They will also manage all the in-session controls including audio. Attendees must register to attend just like you did for this session. They're going to be unmuted by default. They will see the attendee list by default and they can be upgraded to the organizer role mid-session if needed. Starting your training is as simple as logging into your account and clicking the start button just like we looked at earlier. Once the session has been started, screen sharing is off by default, the attendees will see the waiting room slide. Now it's a good idea to mute your own audio until you're ready to begin. You can do this on the left grab tab or in the attendee list. Use the mute all button to mute all of your attendees, even those who haven't joined the training yet, and unmute all will take everybody off of mute. While you're waiting for attendees to arrive, it's a good idea to review the menus at the top of the control panel so they're customized for the upcoming training. From the file menu, you can access your preferences and you can edit your name and email if needed. The options menu allows you to adjust what the attendees can and cannot see from their control panel. What you're seeing are the default options, however, you can make adjustments as needed for each training that you host. For example, if you need to make your training anonymous, you can uncheck attendees can view attendee list and you can make it so they can only chat with organizers only. The view drop down here allows you to choose what tabs are visible in your control panel. By default, these should be all enabled but if by chance you accidentally close the tab, you can always bring it back by selecting it here. So for example, say that you accidentally hit the X and the chat box will disappear. To bring it back, go to view and just make sure there's a check mark here. Also, if you're not going to use audience view or the timer or the dashboard, you can either X them out or uncheck them to make room on your control panel. There are some additional audio options available with the edit button in the audio pane. You're going to want to toggle them before your attendees arrive. Here you can disable the on hold beeps. These are beeps that you're going to hear until the first attendee joins your session. You can also disable the entry and exit chimes. These are tones you will hear every time someone joins or leaves the session. If these tones are bothersome during your event, you can just simply disable them. All right, now before we move into managing the in-session training, let's take a quick poll. And I'm curious, I just want to know how many of you out there have hosted a real training? Not a practice session, just go ahead and vote directly on your screen. All right, I'll leave it open just a few more seconds. And then we're going to close it out. Great, thank you. As attendees begin to arrive, you're going to see their names appear in the attendee list. An audio symbol will also appear next to their name, and it's going to be either a telephone or a microphone symbol, depending on how they've chosen to connect in. In this example, Pamela is using VoIP to connect in. I can tell because she has a microphone symbol next to her name. Alex, on the other hand, is using the telephone option. And I can tell he hasn't yet entered in his audio pin because his phone is gray. I can prompt Alex to enter his pin by clicking on the grayed out icon next to his name or by right clicking on his name and selecting send audio pin. Once the pin is entered, the attendee symbol is going to light up green. Now, if you ever see a gray flash through the audio symbol, it indicates the attendee has self-muted. But if the flash is red, 
That indicates they're muted by an organizer. This is important because whoever implements the mute also must be the person to unmute. This icon here indicates who's presenting, the one actively sharing their screen. And you can mute all by clicking the mute all button. And then of course, the unmute all button will take everybody off of mute. Now, once all your attendees have arrived or it's the scheduled start time, you can unmute yourself and start screen sharing. You're going to be notified that now you are on air showing screen. Use the screen drop down menu here to select which monitor you want to share, clean mode, or a specific application. I like using clean mode because it hides my taskbar, background, and the icons, so it gives it a more professional setting. Now if you decide to record, you're going to select the Start Record button at the bottom of the screen sharing tab. From here you can also access the recording settings we discussed earlier. Once your recording has started, both you and your attendees will see a recorded session indicator at the bottom of the control panel. After starting your recording, wait a few seconds and then, become, then start your welcome and intro, and your training has officially started. The play button you click to begin your presentation will allow you to also pause your screen sharing. Once paused, your attendees will only see what was open on your screen when you hit that pause button. You would then be able to navigate programs on your screen without the attendee seeing your mouse movements or application selection. Click the same play button to resume screen sharing again. An example of when you might want to pause your screen is when you're showing PowerPoint but you want to transition to a website. Pause it on the PowerPoint, click out of PowerPoint, bring up the website. Once you have the website up, unpause it and then your attendees will not see the transition in between. It'll go straight from the PowerPoint to the website. The second button is to stop showing your screen. This will take the attendees back viewing that waiting room slide. Then you have your Give Keyboard and Mouse button. This feature allows you to have a staff member in your meeting take control of your screen, oftentimes used for screen advancement. The Change Presenter button is going to allow another person to share their desktop. So for my visual learners out there, here's a quick screen sharing example. Here we have a meeting organizer and their attendees. By default, the organizer is also the presenter. They're going to share their screen with the group. The organizer can make an attendee the presenter. That attendee can share their screen with the group. Drawing tools allows you to mark up the screen that you're sharing. Drawing tools are a really fun piece of GoTo training. They allow you to annotate and mark up your screen. You can access drawing tools from the highlighter menu on the Grab tab. Now, when you're ready to erase the drawings, you're going to make sure that you click the Erase All Drawings so they don't stay on the screen. Webcams are a great option included with GoToTraining, and I do encourage you to play around with them. You can add a personal element to the meeting to actually see face-to-face -face the people you are connecting with. Up to six webcams can be shared simultaneously, but if someone turns, their off, turns theirs off, another can be turned on. So even if you have more than six people in your training, everybody does have the potential to be seen at one time or another. The dashboard tab correlates directly with the attendee list. It will show the overall attentiveness, which you can see individually in the attendee list. This is marked by the caution symbol, and it indicates the attendee has clicked into something else other than go to training. So they're multitasking. You can also see the hands raised in the dashboard and attendee list. The dashboard also contains the total amount of polls and tests set up and given for the training. Now we're going to take a deeper dive into engagement options. So keeping attendees engaged during training is really important, and luckily GoToTraining has a lot of tools to help you do that. Keep an eye on the attentiveness meter, and if you notice a dropping, it's a great time to start a group activity. 
launch a poll or a test. You can also use the hand raising feature and the chat tool. We've made use to most of these things during today's session. Earlier, you saw polls from the attendee perspective. Now I want to show you how to launch polls from the organizer perspective. Before we do that, I'm going to launch our very last poll of the day. We want to know, do you plan to use the polling feature? Just go ahead and vote directly on your screen now. All right, I'm going to close that out. Thank you very much. All right, so to launch a poll, you're going to go to the poll section. You're going to click the drop down. There's two polls here, and you're going to select it. Once you do that, when you're ready to launch the poll, you're going to click the launch button. Notice that launch button is now a close button. There's also a timer right here showing you how long the poll's been open and the percentage of people that have voted. When you're satisfied, click the close button. Now that close button is now a share button. So if you want to share the results, then you're going to click them and they'll show real big. Next, let's discuss tests. Now these are pretty similar to the polls, but they do have right and wrong answer choices. Select your test from the drop down menu. Once selected, click the launch button to begin the test for your attendees. Screen sharing will be replaced with a testing window from your attendees' perspective. You will be able to track participation in your test as attendees finish and submit their responses. Once your satisfactory participation, click the close button to end the test. Each attendee's results will be available in your post-training report. Now, you can review the attendee's average score immediately after testing by clicking Review. From the Review section, you can choose to share these average scores with your attendees. So your attendees will not see this unless you then click Share Results with Attendees. Remember to start screen sharing after you've completed the test process. Chat can be used for questions and comments from the audience. Remember that the Options menu allows you to adjust what attendees can and cannot see from their control panel. If you need to restrict the attendee chat access, you can do so here. When wrapping up your training, remember to address any unanswered questions or give your attendees contact information for further follow-up. You can answer in-session questions at the end of the session or by taking a look at the chat log and following up after. Consider setting up a post-training test or an evaluation to get some feedback. If you recorded your session, consider making that available to your attendees. You may also want to mention your next training session if appropriate. And lastly, after your event, run the relevant reports. As I've mentioned, our training is a two-part series. I do encourage all of you to sign up to review the Go to Training Advanced Feature Module. It covers the features you see listed here, on-demand training, catalogs, activities, and breakouts. This is a self-paced module, so you can take it at any time. A link will be provided for it in today's follow-up email. Even if you're not ready to learn about these features just yet, please hold on to the email so you can take the training when you're ready. It's certainly a good 15 minutes well spent. Now, if you still feel you could really use some additional assistance before your next training, we are offering you the opportunity for one of our consulting specialists to help you with a technical dry run. The meeting is up for 30 minutes and it's at no cost to you. In a technical practice session, we discuss how to prep for your first live training and then run through some in-session best practices. Or you may want to use the 30-minute meeting to ask in-depth feature questions. Please provide your preference when completing the booking page. The booking link will be provided in the follow-up email sent to you in about an hour after the training. It's a great opportunity for those of you seeking some custom help with the final steps of using your new training account. So that's going to wrap it up, wrap it up for us today. As promised, we have provided some resources. If you haven't had a chance to download the documents in the materials section, now would be a good time to do so, or you can access them in the follow-up email. Also listed here is our customer support number, which you may want to take note of. 
All right. Well, I do wish you the best in using Go to Training, and please contact 24/7 Support if you have any questions. Thank you.